Hey, like, subscribe, share. I hear that's the deal. What I want to do is contact as many people as possible and let them hear what I'm saying. There was a time. What I got over there? I wrote notes, man, because when the thing say click, my mind goes scattered and I start talking about whatever the click make it think about. So I want to keep on whatever note I had over there, which is uh, Anthony Johnson. This man, they say, you know, now with all this retrobation, retro masturbate, reparations talk, the, uh, you know, people are uh, bringing up this so-called slavery thing and then talking about Anthony Johnson, one of the first Negroes to own a, a slave in, the, in, you know, on paper in America that they talk about all the time. So I had heard about this about 20, 30 years ago, this Anthony Johnson thing. I didn't have a name at the time, actually. I just knew uh, Virginia and uh, a nigger. So it took me a while to find out who this nigger was and what actually occurred, and I found it out. They say he was at one time a slave himself. This is the history I found. I got other histories. I'll bring them up to date to you as I can think of them. But I, I know this guy here, Anthony. He was born, they say, a slave. And somehow, this is the beautiful part I love when people tell the story. They say, and somehow he got free. <laughs> uh, there used to be a show called on the rest of the uh, show on TV used to be called the rest of the story. So I'm going to tell you the rest of the story. Not just that crap they be telling you. Like he bought a bunch of slaves and he treated them like this. And he had a big place. And yes, he did. All of that wonderful stuff. What happened was, slavery is not like most people think it is. It wasn't always it became that after, and it only lasted like that for about 20 years, all that Kunta Kente type of slavery thing they are talking about with the chains and the beating people and all that. That, that. that became, that didn't start off like that. It started off as, as bonded service. And what happened was Anthony Johnson had a trade. He knew how to do stuff. So he bought it out his trade until he got enough money to buy his bond. That's what they call it a slave. He was bonded. They call that chicken a Bible, a bond woman. Some, you know, that deadbeat dad kicked him, kicked him out, her and her son out, and her and his son out into the desert or something. But they, she was, they call her a bond woman. That was a bond. You paid a bond, you're done. They hold in bonds. They call that mm, servant. Servant equals slave. And they moved it over to, uh, over a time period, they started saying, well, you're going to be a slave to the, the rest of your life. And the people were like, okay, but your children will be free. Then they started saying, no, not even your children are going to be free. And that's when all of the rebellions and stuff started acting real crazy. And people were like, wait a minute, y'all lying about everything. Every 20 minutes, y'all change moving, what y'all call moving the flagpole or the goalpole, whatever. They, they were lying, just straight up. They moved nothing. And then uh, they lied on all the treaties they made with us, too, same way. They admitted. So what happened is the man bought his own bond. Well, then, he had, he was free. Yeah, you think so? <laughs> Y'all don't know much about that life. Y'all know a lot about some stuff they teach you in school, but watch this. His mother, his wife, his uncle, and his children were still slaves. So what did he do, this beautiful brother, he worked up on enough money and he paid his mom's bond. That was the first slave he bought. Go figure. He paid all his family's bonds and brought them all back to his place. Yeah, he had about 15 family members out of the 25 so-called slaves he had. Cousins, uncles, all kind of people. And at that time, they don't mention this either, 
there were a lot of Europeans in servitude as well. They had bonds on them. Their bonds ran out in, I think it was average of seven years. The, uh, the Negro bonds ran out in an average of 11 years. That's how the bonds were. So you know how they do it now with the mortgages and stuff. They give you bad deals, man. They, they, you ain't, they, they, they blacklist you, red bar you, whatever name they call it. But you know what's going down. You know what I mean? Okay, so check it out. He bought the bonds, man. That's how you get all them people. He's talking about, he. Bu I was like, wow, and this is what happened. This man is a hero. And they're playing him off as though he was some kind of evil thing. To our people, they tell our people, our ancestors made mistakes, our ancestors did this, our ancestors did that. And we go around uh, uh, mimicking them, talking about our own people. So I went and found out, because I don't mimic nobody. I went and found out about this. Man, go find out. Don't mimic these fools talking. Because you're going to get it from professors, so-called teachers and instructors. I'm teaching. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. They're teaching you how to be stuck on stupid. I'm not saying they don't know nothing. They know things. That's nice. That, that, that ant over there knows things. That's also nice. You get me? So then all I'm saying is, okay, this man who was, is being reported right now a lot. I heard three or four times a mention of him in the past two or three weeks. So I said, I better get on here and do some, you know, I, I, uh, traffic control. Which way the traffic flows, there's mental traffic. Right? Okay. The man was a hero. He bought the bonds on his people. But no, nobody wasn't buying slaves at that. They were buying bonds. A lot of the, let me tell you the rest of this story. Because a lot of the people from almost any place you go, or um, any place they came from, were bonded. What, whoever, whatever had came over and put them in a position like you are in a position right now. If you don't pay your, your rent, what going to happen? You don't pay this or pay that, what going to happen? All them bills you got, what you do? who do you think Bill is? Bill is the slave master. He's just been nicknamed to Bill. Yeah, yeah, you know, you got to look at stuff for real, man. Stop tripping. But I understand you're tripping because they're giving it to you as a trip, as a fiction. It's a fiction, a story. Don't hold on to a story. Hold on to what's right in front of your face at the moment. Right? I hear a lot of people talking about, oh, this and that and the other and stuff. Listen. At the moment, the man is a hero. He bought his bonds from his people and people he knew. He even bought some white people bond, I think two, two white people bond. He bought their bond because they were working together wherever they had worked before he got off of this bond thing and was able to run his own business. He knew them guys. Maybe it was a sideline what he did at night. I, I don't know exactly how that went, but he knew them guys. So he hired them, he bought them too and brought them over. That's how he, the man got big, man. He, got, he was already getting big. Just buying his family, he was getting big. And then now they want to try to pull him down like they're doing with Cosby. They want to pull him down. They want to pull all our people down. And, and the thing that I'm watching is you youth them. Y'all willing to help them. Y'all willing to help them and be pulling people down. Your own people. Let me tell you about crabs in a barrel, man, because I'm a crabber. I was a crabber when I was a little boy, seven years old, when I saw this magnificent thing. I had crabs in the barrel. My aunt, I used to crab with her. I had crabs in the barrel. We had two barrels of crab. And I went to do something. I came back. The barrels were empty. Them crabs had pulled themselves out. So I said, how they do that? Because I had heard this cliche about crabs in a barrel. So when we got home or the next time we did some business, me and my aunt, and about crabbing, I watched the crabs intently because I want to see what's up with that. Yeah, they were pulling at each other and everything, and one was pulling up and stepping on the rest and all that stuff. And when the one got to the top and got over, he pulled the rest of them over. They didn't leave one crab in the barrel. So when I hear people talking about, oh, yeah, that's like crabs in a barrel. Y'all don't know what crabs in a barrel really mean. Crabs in a barrel mean you're getting out of here. 
Y'all need to act like crabs in a barrel for real, for real. And get out.